Are you interested in becoming a Flexbox wizard or just being better at Flexbox in general, being better at CSS and not having to spend three hours to put a div in the center of the page? Well, you're in luck because I have all the ins and outs of Flexbox and I'm going to show you how to use it, give you a ton of examples and a great foundation to be able to style all your divs, put them in the center and then be a Flexbox wizard. So let's get into it. All right. So to previous examples, we have our code, which is an index HTML. I have it open in a web browser here, just opening the file. And we have three different divs that have different colors, which, you know, that way we can know what color is which and what order it's going. This has no Flexbox styling on it. And so we have this outline here where we have a container div and then three of our red, blue, and green divs just inside of there. Again, no other styling. Um, I have some comment blocks so I can reveal those and we can see how Flexbox works. And then red, blue, and green are just 100 by 100 pixels. They have their background color set. If you haven't seen the CSS colors video, I'll put a link here. That way you can check it out. There's a bunch of different ways you can set CSS colors. But for this, we're going to focus on Flexbox and how to update your style so that all your CSS flows really nicely. The reason for Flexbox is because there's a ton of different screen sizes nowadays. You know, you have phones, tablets, computers, all kinds of different things. And there needed to be a way to flexibly show all the different, you know, variations of that and have responsive UIs. This is the reason that Flexbox exists and we're going to dive into how it's used. So this first example, again, we don't have any Flexbox, so it is laid out as normal. So it starts top to bottom. Everything's on the left and we have a red, blue, and green, and we see that reflected here. Now, if we bring in Flexbox, and the way to set Flexbox is display flex, and this is kind of the foundation. So you can see all these different examples that I have here all have display flex, and then there's two items here that are justify content and align items. And then I have a height set just so we can see things moving around. You don't always have to set this, so check your examples to see if you actually need this. I don't have any other content within this container, and so I have to set this. This example is gonna center the divs into the page, and also it's gonna center everything. So justify content is going to do everything in the horizontal. Align items is gonna handle your vertical. So this one, this is your horizontal. And then this one is your vertical alignment. I will note though, that if you change the flex direction, so flex direction here is by default row. If you change this to column, then these two things actually invert. So just be careful with that whenever you're trying to style your stuff. So we're going to leave that. We're going to have the default flex direction be row and if I refresh this, so we see this centered, it has the same order, red, blue, green, but like we said before, the default is row. And so it aligns everything in the middle of the page. If we made this bigger, then, you know, everything is centered. And now, you know, you can slam out all those awesome coding interviews that ask you to center a div with no problem. Now let's clear this because this is not going to work well with my commenting system and we'll try another example. So this one, we're going to have a row that's reversed. So we're going to set flex direction here, or I'm sorry, here. Uh, again, we still have display flex and then justify content is center align items are center. The only thing we've changed is the flex direction. And so what this is going to do is reverse so that red is going to be at the end and green is going to be at the start. So if we do this, we can see that reflected. I'll also note, I have all of the information here at the bottom and I'll put a link in the description of all of this code. So don't feel like you have to write all this yourself, although it'd be cool to follow along so that you can see all the different interactions, but I have all of this commented at the bottom so that you can see, all right, here are my options for flex direction. I could do row, row reverse, column, column reverse. So reference this and, and that way you can see all the different options for a container, which is what we're using 
And then also there's more on the item that I'll get into a little bit later. So there's two different buckets of categories. There are the container styles that have you know, a couple of what we've referenced here, which is justify content, align items, align content, flex direction, flex wrap. And then on the item, it has these other ones. So check this out and then we'll continue going through the examples here. So we have our centered row reversed. Now let's move on to a different example. All right, so this one, again, we're setting flex direction row just to be explicit here. This is the default, so we don't technically have to do this. Align items here is going to flex to the end. And so what this means is it's going to go all the way to the end of the container. So if we refresh this, we'll see it goes all the way to the bottom. And so justify content is center. If we took this off, we're, we would actually see everything on the left hand side, I believe. Yeah, there we go. So again, justify content is setting your horizontal align items is setting your vertical. So if we did, you know, flex start here, then it would be at the very top. So if we did that, which this is also the default for, for align items. So flex start brings it up here, but we want it to be at the very bottom. So we'll put it there and then bring back our justify content center and it should center it for us. And again, we have this flexible layout. If we want it to be a little bit smaller, we can change it and it stays right there in the center at the bottom where we need it to. So let's comment this out, move on to our next example and we'll do some flex direction row. So for this one, we're gonna do flex direction column and the same thing that we had. So we have flex end and justify content center. What do you think it's gonna do? Answer this out loud. You know, doesn't matter who's around you, say like, uh, I think it's gonna do this on the page. Well, what's your guess? Did you guess that this is gonna be a column layout and it's actually gonna be on the right-hand side of the page? Well, there you go. So column takes our layout here, red, blue, green, and that's the default. And then it takes it all the way to the right hand side because we're using align items and we shifted to column. So this align items, instead of doing vertical alignment, now shifts it to doing horizontal alignment and our justify content now handles the verticalness. So anytime you use column, it's gonna flip the way that these two things behave. So if you have row, justify content is gonna be horizontal. If you have column, justify content is gonna be vertical. So if we did like a flex end here, then this should show up at the bottom and it does. So we'll leave it as center, put it back where it was. And again, you know, this stays all the way to the right. We can uh, change the screen size as much as we want, but it just sticks. All right, let's do another example here. Whoops, need to uncomment the right things and Flex direction is gonna be row reverse. So similar to what we started with in our, our beginning example, the row is gonna reverse and we're gonna have green, blue, red instead of our normal. And then we're gonna justify content to where it's flex end. Again, out loud, what do you think this is gonna do? Where on the page is this gonna show? Well, hopefully you guessed that this is gonna be on the left-hand side and up at the top because that's where it is. If we did row, then it would be on the right hand side because the container, you know, again, justify content is doing uh, something different. And so if we do a row reverse, then the end is gonna be on the left hand side versus the right hand side. There we go. Again, you have column and row and reverse of both of those and the beginning and end for or flex end and flex start is opposite in those scenarios. So remember that whenever you're trying to do a row reverse and you want things in a different order that impacts flex end and flex start. Now we can get into multiple elements and multiple rows of elements because up until this point, we've only had a single row. The thing I wanna note is that justify content really applies whenever you have that single row. And there's another element called align content. This only comes into play when you have multiple, and usually that's whenever you introduce this thing called flex wrap. 
And if you have a bunch of elements, they're all gonna get smushed together. So if we bring in a bunch of these green elements and refresh the page. So I'm gonna comment this out real quick. So we can see there's a bunch of them. We have a scroll bar. If we brought in just our flex part and not the wrap, we should see all of them smushed together on the, on the top. So you see how they all get smushed and they're no longer 100 by 100 pixels. Well, that's because we're trying to flex them into this small space. So if we made this bigger, you can see the box size gets bigger as well. Well, we want these to wrap so that they stay the same size. And so the way we do that is by doing flex wrap and this will bring it down onto the next line. There you go. You'll have three rows actually, instead of just one. And if you have a bigger screen size, then they all stay on top. But if they're not able to, then they flex and wrap onto the next lines. So in this, in this behavior, we see that there's three, it gives us just some default space. I'll show you how to change that here in just a second, but this is how you accomplish making sure that you have a responsive design and your elements don't get smushed together so people can't read text on your web pages. Let's comment this out and we'll bring this in. Again, we have flex wrap and this has a few different options. It has no wrap, wrap and wrap reverse. Kind of the, the default one is gonna be no wrap, but for us, since we have overflow, we wanna set that to wrap. Now we can set align content, which is a new element. We've talked about justify content and align items, but align content, this is gonna be used to mess with this space here between our different elements. This is cool and all, but let's say we wanted all of these to be together. Like we don't want this extra space. If we had a little bit smaller screen, so we want something like this, but we want it all the time. So the way we can accomplish that is setting a line content. So if we refresh that, you see we have this at the top all the time. So in, in case that we have a smaller screen, then it'll set it for us the right way. All right. This has the same options as the other that we've talked about. Flex start, flex end, center, and then we, we haven't referenced these yet, but there's space between, space around, space evenly. So if we wanted space to be between these, we can set that. So we'll set space between, and we should get some space similar to what we saw in the beginning to where it's a lot of space in between here. Space around is gonna have a little bit of space on the top and the bottom. And so space around, this should give us a little bit more of that. And then center, we would put it all the way in the center, just like that. All right, let's move on to our final example here of the container elements. So we have our column reverse, we're gonna wrap reverse, and then we're gonna justify content. Think about what this is actually gonna do because there's a lot of reversing here. So this one's a little bit tricky, but think about what exactly this is gonna do and where it's gonna display on the page. Did you guess that it's on the right side? Well, look at that. So we have all of our elements on the right-hand side because we have centered with justify content. So if we Oh, I misspoke because we have column reverse. And so we start on the right hand side because of that. If we do a justify content, then this wrapped element is going to be adjusted to be in the middle. And flex direction, if we had this be row, it would be totally different. You could see that the wrap is reversed. If we had this, it would all be smushed on the left hand side. I may, have, I may have just said that incorrectly whenever I was talking about the column. It, it's actually the wrap that's that's moving it to the right hand side. See, I can't, I can't even keep it straight sometimes. So this is a really good example. It's kind of cool to see, you know, how this plays with different screen sizes. You know, our default is red, blue, green, and a bunch of greens. We have almost the total opposite of that 
you know, the default it would show in the top left and be row, but here we have it all the way on the bottom right and kind of wrapping with this space between. So again, all, you can do all kinds of stuff with Flexbox and accomplish some really cool styling. Let's go back to our kind of default here at the top just a Flexbox container without anything. Let's comment out these extra green ones for right now. And then order is one I wanna talk about for the second category of elements. So up until this point, we've talked about container elements. Now we're gonna talk about elements that, or properties I should say, that are on the actual element that can override some of the Flexbox behavior. Let's refresh this and we just have our three elements. Let's say we wanted red to be at the very end of the list. To do that, we can set order, which by default is zero. So all of these have order zero, but if we wanted to override and say red, you go to the very end. Well, we could do that by setting order to one and it would do that. This is a way to override that flow and like default container behavior. If you want a certain you know, class to be at the very bottom or like a header to be at the very top, you can do it this way. So I'll put that back and we'll do a different example. So if we wanted green to be at the end, be at the very end because it is zero for every other one. And then we wanted to flex it at the end, align self will let us do that and we can move that all the way at the very bottom of the page. There we go. So align self gives you a bunch of options to move elements around individually. So you could center it, you could flex to the end, you could do all kinds of stuff. And setting the order then also moves this around. So if we wanted green to be at the front, then we would say negative one, and that would move it all the way to the front and shift things around that way. We could bring back, you know, our flex end, put it at the bottom of the page, and we can kind of adjust this element to be wherever we need it to be and to be flexible and adapt to all different screen sizes. One really cool website that I love to use to show new developers all kinds of things about Flexbox is this Flexbox Froggy. So I'll put a link in the description, but this is an interactive site. So it gives you a nice description, everything I just covered in the video, and it can show you like, hey, I wanna adapt you know, this little frog, get him to the li lily pad. And so if I did justify content here and put it at the end, there you go, he moves around and you can interact with this. So like, let's say I didn't know, I hit center. Well, he's not quite there, not quite at the lily pad. So this is a great example of an interactive tool if you wanna learn a little bit more about Flexbox and use something a little bit more interactive than just a web page that has opened everything. So check this out if you haven't. That's everything I wanted to cover in this video. If you learned something, please like and subscribe. And if you're interested in more CSS videos, definitely let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.